So most people actually built their forever home there. You know, they had beautiful two stories with a pool and the thing and you're close to the beach and the kids love it and close to amenities and what have you. Now people have made four or five hundred grand on those builds and now they're renting out those homes. And so there's a huge actual, yeah, rental market that's now kind of come out of nowhere um, and it's good to actually take advantage of it. I don't don't know. I'm surprised to hear that. that, that You'll be shocked. I do research before we do a podcast. I know. (laughs) This is the Build It West podcast with your host Tony Hyde from Evolution House and Land Specialists and Catherine Smith from Build Great Builder Brokers. If you guys are looking to build in WA or simply curious to see what's going on in building, you guys are in the right place. We're here to give insight with professionals in the game coming to give the inside scoop. Episodes are uploaded weekly, so don't worry, we don't skip a beat and you won't either. Like, share, subscribe, sit back, relax and let's go. Hello and welcome to the Build It West podcast with your host Tony Hyde and Catherine Smith. Hey, Hi. how are you? <laughs> Smash them today. How's it going? Good, good. good how good, are you? Good. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. So after the resounding success of Suburbs Under 500k, which geez, that was mad. That was going, I think under 500k is not one we can repeat because we'll be looking at units. Maybe 50 <laughs> if we look at it. <laughs> we'll be looking at blocks for yeah. under 500k yeah, yeah, next year. Yeah. I mean, we can't, we can't tell you enough like how quickly everything's going. Um, I know. And the guests we've had on uh, are, are talking about it as well. Uh, so as a the- rehash for 500k, we had Hilbert, we had Yanship, and Bad Ivers, Bad Ivers and yeah. the amount of inquiries we've got for those three suburbs since yeah. um, that YouTube dropped was. And the good yeah, news about high. it is we're, we're we're under the impression we, we seem to know that Bad Ivers is going to release quite a few bit more property in the coming new year in 2024. Yeah. Uh, so that's great. It, and it's going to be a bit more north as well, so it'll be a little bit closer to the city and stuff like that, so it's yes, really good. Yes, more near, like, the Wellard, Wellard yeah, Train yeah. would probably be their main I, one. I reckon it'll end up being called North Baldivis because Baldivis is that big that Baldivis is such a massive city. I don't think Baldivis has any boundaries. It's just, just taking... <laughs> whatever, just... That's Baldivis yeah. right there. If you're half an hour south of Perth, you're in Baldivis. Where do you live in R- WA or Baldivis? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on that on that train of thought, we thought a great idea to show you so, so the suburbs that we think that are bang for your buck for under 600K. So if you've got an extra couple of bucks up your sleeve or we just cannot get you anything in those three suburbs, mm. um, we're going to explore the next three that obviously are affordable but around the 600 grand mark. Yeah, absolutely. So first one off the bat, the back. Is Byford, which I suppose is very similar to what Baldivers would be, right? Sort of kind of, and the the growth. Yeah. So Byford is more like in the hills. Mm. Um, it definitely has its own character, if you know what I mean yeah. by that. You yeah. know, you're in the hills, you have hill people there, yeah. different to the Baldivers people. <laughs> if you go to where we spoke about the under 500K and you went to like the Hilbert, if you come a little bit further south, Mm-hmm. Southeastish and up a hill, uh, uh, yeah, and up a hill <laughs> is when you start heading into Byford. Uh, it's been a and it's been a suburb there established for years and years. Mm-hmm. Lots of big blocks and obviously developers. I saw the, the yeah. The it was almost the, the like the fringe of there. Perth. I would mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. it was a it was a fringe suburb. Where it's now it's not. definitely not. You know, it's such funny how things change. Yeah, it's just a normal suburb that, and it's getting connected. Correct through all in you know, Armadale Road and all that stuff. It's all starting to get connected. There, yeah, you know, and um. Stuff. What we're finding, particularly for Byford specifically, is there's just not a lot of stock there because people live there long term. You know, you do not really have like your in and out flippers. It's sort of like the people that live there were probably there for a long time growing up and they're buying because they want to live in our around family and have their own children there and things like that. There's constantly new primary schools going up, um, left, right and centre, new infrastructure, but people are living there long term, you know. Very much a family orientated, and I know from personal experience, the Byford Bowling Club is fantastic on a Sunday afternoon. It is, it is so good. It's a nice community, uh, yeah. But it's a lovely, you know, but it's got the big play area and stuff. It's fantastic. Trust me, the beer's cold, so you can't be complaining. Yes. So what's the what's the facts and figures of Byford, and this is where it is. Hopefully, it's running about me somewhere. Okay, we'll, we'll do a little AI or something, something. Well. It's funny because a lot of people actually buy to live in Byford. Mm. Like we are sort of saying, there is that really big established market and there's not a lot of rentals. So there's 0.4% vacancy rate for rentals, which basically means there's no rentals. Um, so if you were going to build to rent, this is why uh, we basically put Byford on this suburb because the demand for rentals <coughs> extremely high and stock is extremely low. So 
we are getting the investors that obviously, you know, are suiting that market and this is the one to go because you actually do get a really good rental return. Um, the rental yields for BIFA is about 5.78%. So almost pushing the 6%, which is really, really good. I think it will go there yeah. to 6%. Definitely. Um, next year, it's just there is absolutely no rental. So if people are in the position where, let's say their family live in BIFA, but they can't actually afford to buy in just at the moment, they just had a kid or whatever, mm-hmm. they can't service the loan, they want to look at renting and there's just actually no stock available. Yeah. So build to rent by Fed makes a lot of sense. We've got, there's a few suburbs just outside it and, and building in estates and that. So you've got Beanyup Grove, uh, which I think is is pretty much gone. There's only as much there. There is a couple of yeah. the other suburbs that's pretty, that's, that's got quite, it's not got loads, but it's got a fair amount of his Whitby. Yes. Whitby. I feel like Whitby. W-H-I-T-B-Y. Um, Whitby is like next to Byford. Yeah. Um, it's just sort of the the neighbouring suburb, if you will, a little bit underground, still a little bit unheard of, and that's one that's going to be up and coming, I think, will be, um, <coughs> yeah. yeah, we'll probably do a podcast on Whitby yeah, alone so. next next we're, um, 2024. We're seeing with some of those uh, out of that area as well, they're not, they're not tiny small blocks. They're no. They're still fairly decent sized blocks. That's a good point, Which yeah. is a good one if you're wanting that bit of size. I think there's not much less than 375, which sounds small, which is actually a decent size at the moment. Fair block's yeah. about 450, but also reasonably priced, yeah, right? Yeah. So if you want to like a nice family home for 400 square metres or even 500 plus, Byford is sort of uh, yeah. where, where it's at. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, you're I not agree. like, it's not like those tight subdivisions where it's like house boundary to boundary. And you still got a little bit of country living. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's surrounded by the hills, a lot of fields and stuff. What what happens in the future? I'm not really sure, but it's pretty it's pretty old school Australia. What I would it's kind of what I thought Australia would look like when I came. Sort of thing, <laughs> not the cities, you know, like when you drive in, it's like the big homes and the big roads and yeah, the country yeah. town and that. Yeah, I think um, there is a lot of I guess government land with nature and things like that. So a lot of things will be re- yeah. like reserved and and kept that way. Which I think you know nice. that yeah, and in the way they'll, they'll sub they will subdivide it up, but they'll do it smart. The way they've done Bell Davis kept lots of nice open plan parks and stuff like that. So hopefully they, they stick to that. Yeah. All right, let's jump on to the next one. And I I, I really like this suburb. Uh, the, the growth in the suburb was mental. Uh, it's and, a good location, just generally. Yeah. yeah. It's. So this is, I'm going to say it out loud and I'm going to say where it is and everyone can start laughing. So it's Belier in the city of Cockburn. Cockburn. Sorry, it's Coburn. Coburn. It's Coburn, spelt C-O-C-K, but Coburn. <laughs> so Belier. Uh, Belier is a suburb, yeah. Yeah, it's 28, 28K southwest of Perth. And if if you know kind of Perth, it's uh, beach side of the freeway, I think what they kind of call it. The freeway runs down like the middle of Perth, mm-hmm. down, and you've got beach side and non-beach side. This is beach side of a... a uh, pretty close to Fremantle and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Belia, and we'll go through this. It's stats, basically you know. south of Fremantle, but half the price. <laughs> Belia is yep. one of the first suburbs I, yeah, I thought, that, I seen that went on the market and was quickly snapped up and quickly jumped up in price. A lot of double stories in Belia, a lot of double stories mm. because the land was so cheap when people bought in there. Yes. And the growth there was so quick and so huge. It was, it was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah, and almost it, it is in a, a funny pocket because it jumps off the back of Coburn and then jumps off the back of the city of Fremantle. So it has this almost like unintentional growth just based on location alone. And it's kind of sat on top of a hill, like the hill that comes yes. up the road up. So the a lot beach of the properties, views. you can see the beach. No, they're a couple of k's away, but it's still beach views in Indian. There's well, a lot you, of people built. You for sure get beach breeze, right? Yeah, definitely. You get the, was the doctor. Yeah. The Fremantle doctor. Is that yeah. still, is that, people still talk about that. Or does aircon just get rid of it now? <laughs> uh, Aircon's a must, let's be honest. All right, so look, so rental yield on that is a 4.8%. So it's still pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Uh I know that would have been higher a few years ago, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's pretty it's pretty it's a pretty solid suburb to be in and still quite a bit of land around. What I'm finding with um, Belia is it was predominantly created as a build to live, not a build to rent. And that's why the rental yields are a little bit lower just because there's not a lot mm. in that market. I have noticed in the shift last 12 months a higher rental growth for the suburb. What I'm finding is probably people bought, um, built there maybe five years ago and now they're renting it out and have now used that equity to, you know, definitely, definitely. move somewhere they want be- better, right? Um, so there's actually 21% rental growth in the last 12 months, right? So Phil, yeah, I know. Really? Wow, mm. okay. Yep. So th- that's why I put it actually as one of our hotspots for under 600 grand because 
the rental market has rapidly mm. starting to grow in Belia, which was never yeah. actually its intention because if you know Perth, you know Belia being the hotspot that it is, is, it's a very desirable place to live. So most people actually built their forever home there. You know, yeah. they had beautiful two stories with the pool and the thing and you're close to the beach and the kids love it and close to amenities and what have you. Now people have made four, five hundred grand on those books, um, on those builds, and um, now they're renting out those homes. Yeah, yeah. And so there's a huge actual, yeah, rental market that's now kind of come out of nowhere, um, and it's good wow. to actually take advantage of it. I don't, I don't know. I'm surprised that that. that You'll be there. shocked. I do research before yeah, we geez, do a podcast. I know. Right. <laughs> this wasn't my one. Um, um, yeah. Wow, well, I'm actually shocked. So I'm take every second of that because I thought it was like live to build to live. But yeah, the, no. again, we build. It's got massive blocks, like big blocks, and it's got uh, in between sort of fields with the stuff like there is big blocks out there, which again, you know, I'm not sure they are codes, yeah. but you could be open to subdivision and things like that in the future. I know they're quite strict in the city of Cobham with that stuff because of the amount of growth they've had. But there are still a few pockets of land available in, in Bila. We know that. We see that. Uh, not a lot, but there are still some some really good pockets as well. Yes, um, I actually did um, a townhouse there last year, and it was like for a townhouse, I mean, crazy build price. It was like 312 grand for a townhouse. <laughs> I know. It would have a floor in front of it now for sure. Uh, and the rest. Minimum. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she got the keys to the hand the other day actually. Right. Which is ahead of schedule, which is always good. But I, I'll be interested to know what that that townhouse now is yeah. valued at, because her price point I think was like five twenty or something stupid, and obviously definitely we'll have a six in front yeah. of it now. I mean, and just where it's located, it's got so much access to everything down south. Yeah. Say, I mean, it's everything is great, so I definitely think it's a a really good one to look at. Mm-hmm. Already. Next. Okay, last suburb for under six hundred grand built to rent is Forestfield. Forest field. We're now moving back east, but a little bit more closer to the city compared to, say, Byford. Forest field is near the airport, and that is why it is always popular to build to rent. All right, take it away, Tony. Go. All right. So, I, I like forest field. I've got a couple of clients out there that have bought, but it wasn't it wasn't cheap. But their the rental is just I can't believe the numbers that they get on the, mm-hmm. on on what they rent it out for. Uh, so the rental growth was at thirteen point seven percent. That's ridiculous. It is. That's the last 12 months as well. But why? I mean, a few factors, particularly now with the borders opening, obviously the demand for people coming from over east to do FIFO work, yep. right? So generally speaking, let's say if you're coming from Queensland or whatever, you want to try the FIFO life. That is half of WA, let's be mm-hmm. fair. They want to live near the airport because it's easy access for their swing. So Forest Field is generally one of those um, – suburbs that are looked at for that desirability. But also Forestfield is a mix of those older established houses and then the new builds. Yep. New builds are always more favourable in terms of renting out to sort of FIFO because that's a lock and leave, it's a low maintenance sort of thing. They don't particularly want to have those big blocks that they have to mow the lawn and, mm-hmm. and deal with all of that sort of stuff if they're just renting it out and yep. they're not here half the time, you know, because they're up north. So what you find is sort of those more like low maintenance blocks, nothing too too crazy, new builds, so it's it's less hassles with wear and tear and what have you. In city Calamunda, that city of Calamunda, sorry, that's where it's located. Yeah. They're pretty they're pretty good to deal with. I know that they're encouraging dual living and and granny flats and that sort of thing. Uh, quite happy to push that stuff sort of through. Again, aware, because they're well aware of who's who's buying that property up, five four workers, people close to the, the airport, that kind of stuff to, to help kind of push that out, right? Yeah, you're getting a decent rental as well. You're getting about five forty for a three by two and then up high fives for a four bedroom. So Realistically, let's say if there's two guys FIFO or a guy who's FIFO with a family, um, that's definitely <coughs> yeah. desirable, do you know, in terms yeah. of price point as well. And it almost is a little bit targeted towards men, I'm going to say, because they've got their golf course there. They've got sort of their <laughs> nature reserves and things like that. If guys are into hiking. Yeah. Um, and it's actually not that far from the city as well. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a primo location. But again, you pay for it, right? You know, you got you got to pay for it to get there. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely going to be one of those suburbs that will never. I don't think will ever lose you rental. No, uh, because of the location being the airport, the golf course, and so close to the city that I feel like a lot of people will be quite happy to jump in there and yeah. And and I think investors, you'd be a really good rental market in there. You never sort of lose if there is a if there is a downturn in ten twelve years. 
these places will survive. It'll yes. be really good. Other places might not be as well, they'll still be rentals, but they won't get uh, the return won't be as high. So again, smash your smash your mortgage down. So any rental return you get is a is a positive rate. Yeah, and I think um Forestfield was one of the first suburbs to have Metro Net linked. So essentially Metro Net is still Underway, it hasn't mm-hmm. get completed yet, but essentially it would just be connecting su- certain suburbs so, to to the main train lines. So a few years ago, and a good few years ago now, there was a, a need for upgrading the, the, the train system uh, for areas like we didn't have a train station or get we couldn't get to the, the airport. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't. You know, an international airport we can't get the train. It would just take people three hours and it's sitting bus out. That's what they've looked at, done, and then they're starting to connect the suburbs and. Uh, to make that happen so yeah again so forest field's got the, the, the link in there so if yeah. you do want to five phone train in uh, you don't want to park you can just train in and done like that so again another positive for investment especially and it is really geared towards that five phone life that five phone work room i think it's probably five phone work being dominated more in the male industry males in the industry probably that's what it ties into being pushed towards that male dominated sort of Thing. I'm just rambling there, aren't I? You know <laughs> let's wrap it up, but let's just let's just wrap it up. We're going to go. So these are the suburbs we think. You know, if you're going to build as an investment to rent out, sort of yeah. probably the least, let's say five years, mm-hmm. um, you want to have a nice solid rental yield, but you also want probably take into consideration a nice equity growth as well. Um, so yeah, Byford, which is sort of southeast up in the hills. Then you have Forest Field, which is also southeast, but more closer to the city, closer to the airport. Southwest. Oh, sorry, if I was you, sorry. Sorry. And then southwest, we have uh, yeah. Bilia, Bilia yeah, yeah, which is more along the coast. Yeah. What's your favourite? What would you pick? And what one would you pick? I'm going to go Bilia. Yeah, okay, go Forest Field. Oh. But is that, because, actually is that because I'm a guy? <laughs> <laughs> you like golf? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, again, Actually, to be fair, they're all good. I mean, it, that's why they're there. That's why they're yeah, on the yeah, list. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's plenty of other suburbs under 600k, but they, we don't feel you'll get the best bang for buck and the ongoing growth that we want to see. Yeah, the longevity of it. Yeah. Again, and again, you know, come and ask us. We can help you out if that if any of them don't suit you or you want to go higher. There's other there's other suburbs. Let us know what you think about uh, this sort of topic or the, the suburbs under 600k. If you want to see more. Or do more suburbs under the 500k, whatever you want. Shout us out, uh, reach out to us and please let us know. But as always, we'll wrap up here. But as always, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Because it really does help us keep pushing out this good message uh, and what we're trying to do. Okay, so thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. This is the Build Out West podcast with your host Tony Hyde from Evolution House and Lawn Specialists and Catherine Smith from Build Bright Builder Brokers. If you guys are looking to build in WA or simply curious to see what's going on in building, you guys are in the right place. We're here to give insight with professionals in the game coming to give the inside scoop. Episodes are uploaded weekly, so don't worry, we don't skip a beat and you won't either. Like, share, subscribe, sit back, relax, and let's go.